In this session, we're going to take a look at two more situations where it makes sense for government to consider intervening in a marketplace. Generally, we like the idea that markets can kind of take care of themselves and that government probably adds more trouble than it's worth, but these are two situations where uh, the reverse is probably true, and they, we call these public goods and common goods. Let's first take a look at public goods. The classic example of a public good is a lighthouse. Uh, established to help with navigation for uh, seagoing and ocean, uh, seagoing vessels, fishermen, and so on. Now, a lighthouse, as an example of public good, has a couple of important characteristics. First, they are non-exclusive. That means you can't restrict access or sell tickets to it. If you put up a lighthouse, anybody can benefit from it. You can't uh, exclude one person or a group of people from benefiting from it. So it's open to everybody. The second characteristic for a lighthouse is that it is non-rival. And by that we mean you just can't use it up. Uh, within reason, if you have a lighthouse burning at night and I'm out on a boat and I see the lighthouse and I use it to help me with my navigation, that doesn't reduce by any means at all the ability of some other boat captain to uh, make a use of it. So it's non-rival. We don't use it up. So lighthouses are good things, and very often, uh, privately, organizations will come together, or, or private individuals will come together, and uh, perhaps pool their money in order to build something that's in a, their common interest. They can't afford to do it individually, but if they pool their funds, then they can often achieve what they want. However, when that happens, we run into what we call the free rider problem. Because you can't sell tickets or restrict access to a uh, public good, if somebody is just waiting off in the wings, doesn't participate in the pooling of funds, doesn't offer their share of the cost or whatever, they still can benefit from it, i.e. they become a free rider. Now, where this starts breaking down entirely is that as soon as the community recognizes that there's at least one free rider, then the rest of the members of the community who might otherwise have felt uh, obligated to uh, share in the cost of the public good, now that they see that there's a free rider, they're less likely to want to participate themselves. Why should I pay? He doesn't have to pay. You can see the problem. As a result, usually government steps in as a way to enforce this decision. Uh, the voters, through a variety of mechanisms, agree to build a lighthouse. They tax themselves in any of a number of different ways and they enforce collection of the money uh, in whatever tax or fee was uh, decided on. So the government intervention here is necessary to uh, assure compliance basically with building the public good. And the result is, is that we have lots of public goods all throughout our lives. Some examples include public roads or emergency services like police and fire. Just think of those first two. Both of those are basically open to anybody. You can't restrict access to them. Uh, even emergency services are just a sense of reassurance that somebody's watching out for the law or for fire and so on. And so uh, they're classic public goods. Libraries is another one. Although there's a little bit more of an opportunity to exclude folks, but by tradition we've generally not done that. National defense on a larger scale is another thing, uh, example of a public good. Now, let's go on to the second category, and these are called common goods. Common goods, for instance, like rivers, uh, common goods share one attribute with a public good in that they are non-exclusive. With the exception of some property owners along the banks or something like that, uh, typically a, a water like river or lake or something like that is open to anybody and um, there's really no way to restrict access to it. Obviously we can think of some exceptions to that but in general it's not a bad uh, example. However where common goods differ from public goods is that they are rival. Well, again let's think about the river and let's back in farming days a creek or a river going down a hill and one farmer or rancher decides to divert some of the water for use on their property, uh, if they decide to do that, that means there's less water downstream for their neighbors. So with a common good, the 
consumption is does one person's consumption does matter to the other. Now what I'm going to ask you to do, and I won't explain it here, but what I'm going to ask you to do is look up the concept of tragedy of the commons. You'll find a very short description of it in the text. You'll find a very nice description on Wikipedia. And if you go to my blog, the plainsense.com blog, and look over under categories under tragedy of the commons, you'll see some examples there. Some other examples of common goods include, as we just talked about, like public water sources. Uh, wells, aquifers, rivers, lakes, things where that are where water has been generally available to the population and yet are rival. Clean air is a really good example of a common good. Uh, how do you use up clean air? Well you use it up by putting pollutants into it. Individually if uh, one person decides to burn some brush and some partially uh, partially burned particles go in the air, uh, that uses up the air and uh, actually the individual doesn't see any big problem with it because they disperse in the air and they seem to go away right away, but nonetheless uh, by putting some sort of version of pollution into the air we now have uh, used up, if you will, some fresh air. Grazing land and public forests, this is, these are big deals of course here in the Pacific Northwest, whether you're talking about uh, cattle grazing on BLM or uh, Forest Service land, public forests, um, any of those are things where they're within some limits there's it's hard to exclude anybody from using them and yet they are rival you can use them up. And the most uh, relevant and recent thing has to do more generally with atmospheric conditions in addition to just clean air all our discussions about ozone layers, carbon dioxide, global warming, and so on are good examples of a public resource, a common resource like our atmosphere, and it being used up by the addition of certain pollutants in it. So now we've talked about both public goods and common goods. And in the case of public goods, we thought that it makes sense for government to intervene to make sure we can collect enough money to build the project and enforce compliance. With common goods, uh, the reason that uh, the government might want to intervene is that individually, as you'll go back and see in the tragedy of the commons, individually if we make decisions about using a source like this, we're going to make what we call a suboptimal decision. We're going to end up personally, well, as a collection of individuals, we'll make a decision to use too much of this uh, scarce resource. And so very often government steps in to try to regulate that. We'll go on to a separate video to talk about externalities next.